Hello, 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 and welcome to the stream. I think we are finally live now. I'm sorry about the delay if you're actually waiting for this. Um, but yeah, I'm here finally. So let's do the beginning of the stream test as this. usual. So yeah, let me just like pause the music and make sure that I can hear myself. Even when the music is like very, very loud. So yeah, let's see. Um, but yeah, I'm here finally. So let's do the beginning of the stream test as usual. This. So yeah, let me just like pause the music and make sure that I can hear myself. Even when the music is like very, very loud. So yeah, let's see. Okay, yeah, that seems to be a good volume. Just maybe a little bit louder on your end, guys, but not on my ear. Yeah, and here we go. Now we should be good. Now we should be good. So yeah, uh, welcome to anyone who's actually watching this uh, either today or in the future. And I hope you all had a very good uh, end of the year and that you managed to spend some time with family and get some rest like I did. I actually spent about two weeks doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> I did have plans. I had uh, many, many plans to actually stream every day and create a few videos but you know in the, at the end of the day uh i just decided to kind of relax a little bit and just sit on the sofa and play some games uh, because i don't usually get to do those things when i'm <laughs> when i'm working and making videos for you guys or streaming for you guys so that's what i did with in the past two weeks uh and yeah that's why you may not have seen me here but you know welcome uh today we're actually going to be doing some uh, golang i know golang is not something i usually do on the channel here i've done rust i've done c obviously uh, and i've actually done haskell as well which is a little bit different uh, because it's a functional programming language but today uh we're just going to do some rust and the reason being right this is kind of jealous of me really um i'm trying to gain some more experience uh with hdmx which is kind of like a a new front end uh, framework i guess uh which enables you to handle forms handle requests uh in javascript without actually having to write any javascript uh so you basically just have to put some stuff in your html and you can do things like you know sending data to forms and receiving the response back in the same page and like hot reloading the same page um and so on and so forth so it's, it's very very useful um so yeah i mean that's what we're we're gonna do today um and why golang well golang was kind of chosen here because i've already got a a um a website that i've created before for a business of mine um so if i do i'll show you guys here Okay, I am showing a capture secret that I now have to delete, thanks to <laughs> thanks to me being stupid. Uh, but I've basically like designed this website in the past. I think it was like two years ago when I actually opened a food business food business uh, where I live here. So it, I opened it with parents, and then this was the, basically the front end for it. Uh, and you know, this website has a few like templates, I guess. So like you you can we have like a menu, we have a contact page where. Uh, we send some data back to the web server and the web server goes and sends like emails out and saves things to database. Um, and we have like email subscription and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, so the idea is to, well, get some experience with HTMX so I can rewrite this whole backend here because this website does have a backend and I want to rewrite it in a way that I can basically plug in any template, uh, any sort of like theme on this really. So if we, if you think about Kind of like Joomla or uh, WordPress or any like content management system. Uh, I want it to kind of work in a similar way. Uh, obviously, it will be a, like a lot more basic than those things. I'll, I'll probably end up supporting uh, the creation of different pages, the creation of contact forms, and the creation of um, something like you know a card page or, or a menu or whatever. And you know, if you can achieve that in GoLang, I'll be I'll be very happy. Um, and to help me with all of this, uh, you know, for this particular website, if you look at the, the source code, uh, you can see that I've used um, things like, you know, jQuery and a Bootstrap for, uh, and a few, you know, different uh, JavaScript plugins here. Uh, but I kind of want to, like, 
not have to use as much JavaScript in this new project. Uh, and in fact, I've, I had to actually write quite a, quite a bit of JavaScript for this particular website, which is kind of littered all across the, the web application. Uh, but instead, I'm going to use HTMX here. And you can see that I've already started to kind of look into it because it, it's here now. And I've already kind of integrated HTMX in this particular backend. But, you know, that's the idea. We're going to do something similar to what I've got here uh, from scratch using Golang on the back end and HTMX to help on the front end uh, templating stuff. Uh, and if you don't know what HTMX is, HTMX, you can kind of, uh, you know, view it as like a, a JavaScript itself framework. So it is written in JavaScript, uh, but it makes you not have to write any JavaScript because we'll do most of the stuff that you would otherwise, you know, use JavaScript for. And if you think about uh, making requests, um, sending out forms and validating things, um, or even uh, templating certain parts of your website, HTMX does all of that uh, in a very sort of like simple way. So you can see some examples here um, on their webpage. So HTMX.org. You know, the most uh, kind of common example is like you've got a form and you want to send some data and then show the, the result of the form submission on the same page without having to reload the page. And, you know, I guess this is this is kind of one of those here. Um, and it supports get requests, it supports a post requests, it supports put requests, it supports all of them, actually, all the verbs, I think. So, yeah, I mean, this is, this is what we're going to be doing today. Um, so first of all, let's actually, you know, kind of begin to uh, to write the um, the directory for this whole project All right uh, Peter hey Peter <laughs> happy new year man how is it going man I've obviously not been active in the past two weeks I was kind of just doing nothing <laughs> doing absolutely nothing on the sofa just playing games for for two weeks and it was it was worth it it was very enjoyable but yeah, I hope you're doing fine, man. How was the, uh, did you celebrate with family? Did you, you know? How was your end of the year? That's what I'm asking. Uh, so yeah, let's let's actually begin by creating a directory. Um, right, this is a backend framework. This is a content management system, I guess. Um, having a class now, so I can't be fully here, but I went. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, focus on your class, man. But yeah, thank you for giving me the view. If you, if you can just keep watching and not paying attention, that will help as well to, to keep the, the view count high up. <laughs> There's been no Christmas break. I just studied. All right, man. That's unlucky. Hopefully you, you're finishing uni soon. But, you know, go go and enjoy your class. Go and focus. <laughs> um, I don't actually know what to call this project. But... Something to do with backend, something to do with like content management. Um, HTMX. Actually, like, I, I can think of the ultimate example for what we're trying to do. I think there is a thing called Contentful, and I remember looking into it a few years ago. And this is essentially a headless CMS, a headless content management system for your website. And, you know, this, this project will be something like this, I guess, right? So they call themselves Contentful. <laughs> Go content management system. Go CMS. There you go. We're just gonna call it out for now. Oh. Uh, let's see what version of Go do we have installed. Go version. Oh, Go version. Sorry. One point twenty one. That's good. That's not an old one, right? So currently they're on 121.5. Yeah, that's what we've got. So, okay. 
Um, right, so that, let's structure our project. And there are different ways to structure Golang projects. I think the most common one is where you have like a CMD directory and a source directory or something like that. So I'm gonna kind of do that. So uh, Golang structure project. Let's just copy what people say online, right? Now this is a very, very big pr uh, project here though. This is a basic layout for Go application project. It's not an official standard defined by the call. Okay, yeah, it's not. But CMD, if I'm not mistaken, is where, you know, the main application for this project. So let's kind of use this kind of standard here. Um, do we have anything else? So we've got the build here, we've got the assets, configs, deployments. I think we only really care about the CMD project now. So yeah, let's do that. We'll make the CMD. Okay, so we got that. Um, and inside here, let's actually make the directory, the um, yeah, the directory for our, for our application. So let's go CMS. And we are good to go now. So I think, you know, if we just uh, run go in it or something. Sorry, not go in it. Um, go get to get our um, our frameworks that we, we're going to be using. Um, yeah, so that, that comes to the, we, we get to the first question actually now, which is, uh, which are the best web frameworks for Golang? Now let's see them. Um, I personally have experience with some of them already. So Jin is something that is quite popular nowadays. I've never heard of Bigo. Echo, I have heard of, and it's got 24 point, 24k stars. Beagle has 29k stars. Jin, though, has way more. Okay, so maybe we go for Jin because it will be just better developed, right? If, if it has more people kind of working on it. <laughs> uh, I've personally used Gorilla Muxer, which is this one here. Um, looking at it, I, I do know it's not a, a popular library anymore. It was actually inactive for a few uh, months, you know, quite a, I think a year ago or so before there was someone else uh, kind of maintaining this project. So I'm not sure I want to go for this one. Uh, but Jin looks quite, quite good and it has a lot of stars here. So like maybe we can go for this one just so I can get some more experience with a different framework as well. So Jin is a web framework written in Go. It features like a Martini-like API with performance that is up to 40 times faster thanks to HTTP router. Uh, if you need performance and good productivity, you'll love Jin. I do, yeah. The key features are zero location router, fast middleware support, cache free, JSON validation, uh, routes grouping, error management, rendering built in and extendable. Yeah, so let's, let's go for this. So, um, the usage is very simple. In Golang, if you don't know, you can just kind of like import um, repository straight away in your in your code and go mod will kind of, or go get will kind of like go onto the uh, GitHub repository, download the um, the third party library and use it in your, in your repo, right? And obviously this is all version. This is, you know, what you'd expect. It's kind of like similar to, to Cargo in a way. So let's do that. Yeah, let's start to code. I'm going to be doing this on uh, Visual Studio Code, if you're wondering. And I kind of want to just make this something simple very, very quickly. <laughs> um, we haven't decided yet what kind of like simple CSS framework. Uh, I want to get some sort of like quick theme going on. Uh, what is this? Simple.css. I mean, that's a very good name, by the way. They chose that name knowing that people would search exactly for this. So let's see if it has like a, a quick theme I can kind of use. It seems to be very responsive. Uh, Simple CSS framework is a framework that makes semantic HTML look good really quickly. 
Simple CSS is mostly classless, which means that you can integrate Simple CSS with a plain HTML and your site will look great. If you want to add some simple classes to Simple CSS, you have them available. If you have an idea for additional classes, TLDR. If you want to go straight to the good stuff and learn how to integrate Simple CSS into your project, use the button to visit. Okay, yeah, I, I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to transform like a simple HTML website like this into something like this. I'm, I'm down to use this as a, as a theme for now. So let's go for it. I'm going to keep this tab open. Um, but let's actually, you know, kind of begin the, the, Golang, the Golang application so we can actually just get something building, right? So if we do go CMS here, or just main, I guess, no go. Uh, we're going to import some of the good stuff here. Oh yeah, I need package main. Package main for the application. Um, and then we can do the imports, which are kind of already here. Uh, okay, and then let's just copy their example and then we can kind of modify it later on, right? What is this? I could not import gin tonic. Okay, yeah, that's because we don't really have... Um, we haven't done, you know, go get, I guess. Go mod file is not found in the current directory or any parent directory. Go get is no longer supported outside a module. To build and install a command, use go install with a version. Right, go install this. Our latest or run go you know i'm not a massive like user of go get and i've not actually done letting go in ages so let's let's look for help right go get help what's go mod Was it go mod help? What what can we get here? So we can initialize the new module in the current directory. We can okay. So maybe if we go into CMD and this, we can do a go mod here. Go mod in it. Nope. Okay, so that just initializes a, a mod file. I guess that contains all the requirements for this project. Yeah, so if you look into the go mod file, you can see the name of the website, I guess. <laughs> and then the go version. Okay, so let's remove that go mod for now. And then let's do it here. So go mod in it. Let's just add my kind of uh, GitHub as as the uh, the website for this this module. And I don't actually remember what my GitHub is, to be honest. Oh, we don't want to close this tab. Yeah, it's Mateus Gomez twenty A. Okay, good. So now if you go into CMD and whatever here, so can we do a go get? Yes, we can. Nice, nice, nice. And then I guess this will have kind of um, added to this. There you go. So all those indirect dependencies will be here. Uh, but then we can see that he added version 1.9.1 here for the Jin framework. That's what we were downloading, uh, which you know surely does mean that we can kind of we can kind of like run this now. Uh, so let's just try and run this uh, with Visual Studio Code. Uh, let me once again just increase the uh, 
the zoom here so you guys can see it. Uh, so just to summarize, all we've done so far is try to, well, got Jin installed on, on the current module that I'm creating, uh, which is actually an application in Go. And uh, we've just copied and pasted the, uh, the very basic example that they've got here, which uh, if we read it properly, it just, I guess, initializes a Jin um, context here and then just handles the ping, the forward slash ping um, path there, right? So I have a massive headache, massive, massive headache, massive headache. And the handler, if you look at it correctly here, so you, you can say that the get ping uh, is handled by this functions, anonymous function here, which just takes a gin context. Okay, I don't fully understand this yet, but let's let's run and see what happens. This is definitely an anonym, anonymous function, a lambda here, uh, which is then parsing some JSON, I guess, or sending some JSON back. Yeah, so I'm sending some JSON back to the context C there. That, that's kind of what it's doing, I guess, right? So yeah, I mean, let's try and kind of compile this or run a debug.json file. Um, what do we want to do? Launch package, yeah, why not? Launch a package, and this is going to be called our gin framework here. Is it Golang type mode? Okay, program name, uh, CMD. And what do we have here? So, go CMS. Enrique CPP. Enrique CPP. <laughs> Hi, Matt. How many years do you live in England? Um, I'm guessing you're Brazilian, right, dude, with that name? So, you probably figured out that I'm from Brazil as well. Uh, I'm gonna reply in English though. So I've, I've been here in the UK for um, 15 years now, nearly 15 years. 2009 is when, when we moved over. So it was a long time, a long, long time. Let's see if I can actually just put, there you go. Yeah, um, workspace folder, CMS, uh, CMD, go CMS. Right, so if we do this now, does it run? So again, I'm just running this application here. Yes, I am. Yeah, <laughs> maybe in the car, maybe. Uh, if you open in browser, you can see, there you go, page not found. But if we do a ping, there you go. We get a response, a JSON response with message pong. And that's good. Um, that's not quite what we want to do, right? That's not quite what we want to do. Firstly, we want to actually set up like a nice, I guess, an index file uh, with some form I guess right so let's let's do that uh, let's use maybe GPT to do that right so chat open AI let's make sure uh, give me a bare bones HTML index file that displays a link menu under a unordered not a list followed by a um, let's say a, a comment right or a message message contact form in a div after the menu Let's see, there you go. So that's kind of what, I, I don't want to write this myself. I just use the GPT to do this, because why not? Yeah, 15 years, well, that's why I noticed a bit of a British accent on you. Thank you. <laughs> obrigado, obrigado. Tem gente que nem sabe que eu não sou daqui. Yeah, once you're in the uh, in a different country for a, a long, long time, then, um, you know, you, you pick up the accent quite quickly to the point that you'd be a native speaker, actually. And especially if you come from a, you know, come come at a very, a very young age, like myself. I think I came here when I was like, um, like 11 or 12. Then it's even easier for you to pick up the language, even easier. 
Um, I'm gonna just create this um, page called this folder called templates here, and we have our index.html. And in that, we're gonna do this. Uh, but the thing is, I want to kind of, I want to kind of like serve this 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 directory here as a you know as as it is kind of like shall we do that so in other words i want to go into gin uh, i want to say whenever someone hits the um the root path i want i want you to serve index.html it will save the home page right so how do i do that uh, that's what we're going to find out now we're going to figure out from the github page here And this is this might be a little bit difficult, but we'll figure out. Yep. I want Google, and what I want to do is like gin uh, serve static files. That's that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Serving static files uh, with gin, right? So router.static is seems to be the the one. Okay, so uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but we can figure out. We can figure out. So I guess, you know, if let's look at the documentation, documentation here and figure out what actually which one is which. So this is the relative path and then the root string. Statics, uh, static serves files from uh, the given file system root internally. A HTTP dot file server is used, therefore HTTP dot not found is used instead of the router's not found handler. Uh, to use the operating system's file handle, <laughs> the operating system's file system implementation, use this. Okay, All right, interesting. So the relative path is the first one. Uh, I don't know what this actually is though. Where is this defined? Well, either way, so the root is here. Uh, immediately saw that you was Brazilian. <laughs> it says, oh, yeah, no. No, no, tem como escapar. <laughs> brasileiro, brasileiro. O difícil é conseguir os gringos para assistir isso aqui, né? I think falar inglês, man. So, yeah, I mean. So this in theory, in theory, this should work, right? In theory, this should go over to kind of templates there. But we'll see. Uh, yeah, let's try and like run this. Open in browser. And template. Localhost can't be found. Index.html. Right. What can we get here? So obviously we're gonna we're gonna have an error. So get templates.file path. You trusted all proxies, this is not safe. We recommend you to set a value. Please check this for details. Environment uh, variable port is undefined using port 8080 by default. Um, all right. You like parties? I, I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who doesn't like parties? Quem não gosta de uma festinha? So, right. Uh, redirecting, redirecting requests. Templates to templates. Okay, I don't actually know where this route the root um, is, by the way. So we've got delve there. I don't know where the working directory is, right? So this is probably why it's not working. Now, there are many clubs in Manchester. Um, yeah, there's quite a few, but I don't, unfortunately, I don't, I don't really go out too much anymore. <laughs> I'm getting older, dude. I've got velhinho já. So templates goes to templates here, right? But I think this is kind of running from, can I change the work directory here? So if we do current working directory, I 
just want to make sure that, you know, the template is, is properly workspace folder. Workspace folder, right? Yeah, nice. Let's try that again. There you go. Now it worked. Uh, yeah, it's just a, a work current working directory issue. It's probably starting the application from like here, I guess, right? So, <laughs> but we, we got it. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is kind of try and add um, the simple CSS stuff, right? So the minified version, let's try and add this one here. Well, actually, what we can do is we can kind of um, just download this file, I guess, right? So let's just download it into our templates or our static uh, directory. Uh, right, so what we need to do is to go into our templates currently. Um, go into terminal. Right, if we double get this, we should have that simple dot <laughs> main dot CSS now, right? Which is good uh, because then we can. What we can do is we can um, kind of use the same same share as what we had here, but put our link to it, right? So if we go to index, uh, we've got a head here, we've got a title, and we've got a link here as well. Uh, oh, a lot of comments. I immediately saw the Brazilian, I saw the one. Are there many clubs? Quero me mudar um dia para Inglaterra algum dia. Menos para Londres porque é muito caro de ver. <laughs> Cara, infelizmente em Inglaterra, antigamente o pessoal conseguia vir para cá com com passaporte europeu, né? Tipo, se você tivesse um, um avô, uma avó da Itália, ou um tataravô italiano, alguma coisa assim, espanhol, você pode tirar a, a cidadania europeia, né? Mas hoje em dia a Inglaterra não faz mais parte da da União Europeia, então fica um pouquinho mais difícil, né? O jeito que você vem pra cá agora é só trabalhando mesmo, só achando um trabalho que, que te apoia, é, que a gente chama de, é, de apoio aqui, né? Que o, o trabalho te dá um apoio é, salarial pra você morar aqui. E, e isso tem que ser um trabalho bom, na verdade, não é qualquer trabalho que faz, que oferece isso hoje em dia. Pena que é a cidade mais balada, badalada do Reino Unido. <risos> é, é, Londres é, é bem... É bem busy que a gente fala, né? Bem, tem muita gente, tem muita coisa. A cidade nunca dorme. Se você já foi em São Paulo, pense em São Paulo, mas com segurança. E gente de todo quanto é lugar do mundo. Tipo, asiáticos, brasileiros. Uh, tem, tem muita gente, cara. Muita, muita gente. Now I'm gonna switch back to English. <laughs> so, uh, me and Henrique was just, were just talking about... Uh, living in the UK, because he seems to want to come to the UK. E como você foi para aí? Então, cara, eu, eu tenho dei a sorte, né? Eu tinha, eu vim para cá na época que uh, o Reino Unido ainda era parte da União Europeia e eu tinha a cidadania ou passaporte espanhol, né? Eu ainda tenho passaporte espanhol por causa dos meus dos meus avós. E é isso, cara. É assim que a gente veio para cá, na verdade. Hello, hello, Matt. Eduardo Faya. Hello, Eduardo. Welcome to the stream, man. Are you also Brazilian or are you from... I guess Italy, right? It kind of looks like a, an Italian name. <laughs> okay, let's go back to English. <laughs> yeah, good uh, good idea, good idea. It's always good to go back to English when we have multiple people, yeah. Italy, all right, yeah. I, I kind of guessed that from the, from the name, dude. So, you yeah, know, welcome to the stream. Uh, I think you're new here, right? I've not seen your name before. So, you know, very many, many welcome. Many, many welcome. You're very, very welcome to the stream. Um, we're doing some Golang today, though. So if you if you guys know any Golang, if you have any questions, please let me know. Okay, so we've got that style sheet now. And basically, the application should have something now, right? Or maybe not. Is because I'm not actually running the application. There you go. Now this is what it looks like. So we've got a contact form and the um, the home at the top there. And this is a good start for us, right? So we've got like a 
some links here. We can have like home about services contact or whatever. And the idea, like the, the reason why we want to use kind of um, HTMX here is so we can kind of like handle a form like this one uh, using HTMX without using any JavaScript in a way that when I click on this button here, I want it to make a request to my backend in Golang. Uh, and the backend is going to process the data, it's going to process everything, it's going to validate the email and, and so on and so forth. And it's going to return a, um, a message to my user, say, you know, you know if you've, your message has been sent uh, successfully or something like that. Um, and this is all, you know, without writing any JavaScript at all. And that's what we're going to do here. That's what we came to do. So first of all, we actually have to write a, an endpoint. Uh, and if you don't know what, what an endpoint is, it's just like a, a website path here that will handle the contact form. In other words, we're going to add uh, with, on my Jin framework, a handler for the contact uh, page here, for the contact um, form, all right? So let's let's do that. So right, I don't actually know how to do this myself, so I'm going to Google it, obviously. So Jin, um, well, I, I kind of have an idea, right? So it, we can go into the main here. We can kind of just copy and paste this whole thing here. Uh, this is adding a, a get endpoint, right? So I can only assume <laughs> by symmetry that the post one is kind of like post, right? And And we can call contact send, right? Or something like that. I'm new, I found you when I searched the Conan tutorial. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. That, that Conan tutorial, um, you know, was very good for my channel. A lot of people came in through that. And it kind of like just died now. So not many people are watching that video, but yeah, I'm glad that I helped you, man. I'm really glad that I helped you. Uh, I do post more C++ content every now and then. And whenever I have time, actually, because making a video is actually very time consuming very very time consuming and i find it very difficult to make a new video every week but who knows this year you know we're gonna try it uh one of my main things for this year is to actually grow the channel and to achieve that i actually have to post more stuff on the channel so that being live streams that being you know actual videos and so on so you know what i'm saying is if any of you know how to do <laughs> video editing let me know and i'm glad to pay you guys to actually just edit my videos uh, because that's that's what takes <laughs> the most time for me. Italy, I'm new. Okay, it's great. You work for scientific software development. Uh, I not anymore. I used to, uh, but I you know I've uh, I've got just about six years of experience and I've worked uh, in like three different three or four different companies. So yeah. <laughs> Do you know if to obtain a green card in Scotland requires authorization from the? Uh, so I'm, I'm not a an immigration expert, right? But um, to get a, a, you know, the visa, that's what we call it here, a visa, a working visa. Uh, even in Scotland, it, it's the same as the UK. Like the, the whole of the UK is the same. Uh, whether you're going to Scotland, where, whether you're going to like Wales or England or um, Northern Ireland, it's, it's all the same like um, rule basically. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I, it, uh, in Hika, I can I can kind of recommend you kind of googling how to you know how how to get a visa for the UK uh, because I, I don't really know everything. You know, one of the ways I know is kind of like getting a, a job here that will um, that will support you. Uh, but there are there might there might be different occasions where you can also get a visa. But do do Google it because I I don't really know I you know it's not my my field of work. <laughs> but the you know um, there are websites that actually provide a lot of information regarding this. So yeah. Uh, going back to the code and actually going back to Eduardo's question. Yeah, I, I was just saying what you know where I've worked. I've worked. Uh, I've worked at a company doing graphical software, doing OpenGL and that kind of stuff. That was my first job. And then I moved on to a company called Jaguar Land Rover. You probably know their cars, Jaguars and Land Rovers. I was doing some um, embedded software development in C++ as well. This is all C++. And then the third place was Microsoft where I worked for about, um, you know, just under two years. I think it was a year and seven months or something. 
and and now I'm here, a company called Hadian, where we do scaling software, and I actually work with Rust. Rust is a you know a different programming language, um, but you know I I do coding on my free time. I do I do anything, anything that's enjoyable and it's to do with coding. I'll probably get into it. Uh, have you ever visited Scotland? I have, yeah. I've been to Edinburgh. Edinburgh is really good, really, really good. The accent, you know, if, if you um, find a, a video of someone speaking English from Scotland, uh, it, it's very difficult to understand if you don't, if you're not used to it. But, you know, try it, look, look it up, and he can look it up. You'll see what I mean. It's very difficult to understand them. <laughs> so we've got a function here, we've got JSON. We don't want to send a JSON status, do we? Request a parse form. So let's parse the form. So see the request. Okay, so we do have the request value. Okay, yeah. So this kind of works in the same way as the um, the Golang HTTP stuff. So we've got the request object that we can access, and we can get a form value of whatever here. So let's call it uh, email. And what does this return? I think it just, it just returns a string. Yeah, just a string. Uh, obviously, this is not used. Um, let's go back to a little website. So we've got name, we've got email, we've got message here, right? And let me just see what IDs these things have, because I have no idea. <laughs> so the ID is name, and the name is name. Name, email, a message, right? Yeah, name, email, message, right? No problem. So we're going to get all these values. So email here, and we've got the name, and we've got the message. Yeah, tutorial. It's surely time consuming, but I appreciate it very much. I was struggling about C++ dependency, so I found your video about Conan. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be doing a lot more C++ tutorials uh, this year. There's a lot of like CMake, um, new CMake stuff that has been like released in the, in the latest versions. A lot of things have changed uh, since I uh, I made you know videos about those things, like how to create libraries with CMake. And the way you declare certain things have now changed, so I need to update those videos as well. So yeah, there'll be a lot of more comment, uh, a lot of more uh, content on on those in this year. So you know, tune in and, and thank you for joining. Like one of the things that we can do is like we've got an email here, right? So we should probably pause the email to make sure it's a valid email, right? So let's put it here. Pause email on the form. And what else can we do? Uh, we need to pause a name. No, we don't really need to pause a name. Just make sure names and messages name and message is reasonable right but i mean just like checking the length of it maybe making sure that it's not too big um yeah is there actually a way to limit you know limit um form text size golang so i don't want someone to like sort of like upload 100 megabytes worth of text in one form. Is there a way to limit the size? That's what I wonder though. Otherwise, the, cor the correct way to limit the size of the request body is to do as you suggested. Max bytes reader. Okay, let's see if we can kind of use this. Wait, what? Let's see if Jin has that. So Golang, Golang Jin max body size, right? Set a lower memory limit for the multi-part forms. The default is 32 megabytes. Okay, right, so, I mean, the default is kind of reasonable, right? 30, nah, not really reasonable. 
Let's change it in the router actually. What is it called? Uh, max multi. And what is this? Multi uh, max multi part memory value of max memory param. Value of max memory parameter that is given to HTTP requests. Parse multi uh, multi part form. Yeah, method call. Right. So it's in sixty four. Um, yeah. Let's say that's one. Right. Yeah. This is one megabyte, I guess. Right. Uh, what is this supposed to be an in? Yeah, it's supposed to be an integer. So you can only send up to eight megabytes <laughs> to our website here. That is good. So yeah, parsing the email. Right. Email. Um, there is a a header called not a header, a library called mail or a module called mail in in Google. So we can kind of like use this parse address here to parse that email, right? And this is why we do a you know. This is why we do this to make sure that it is a valid address, right? So what does this return? An error and an address, right? Cool, yeah. And then here we can say if the error is in a nil, then something did occur here. And this is where we kind of return a, a, a different error. So C dot, I guess it, we can return a JSON as well for this particular part. So HTTP status um, bad request, I guess, right? This is a 401, I think, or something. What is gin.h? I like this, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay, yeah. Eduardo Brito, another Brazilian. Hey, welcome, welcome. I write in a web app until boredom. That would be the quickest video ever for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I do agree. But sometimes web applications have to be written and it's good to know how they work anyway. So, you know, tune in, make sure you stay on. Hopefully it's not making <laughs> making you too bored. Where are you from, my dude? I guess you're, you're from Brazil, right? Another Brazilian here. Yeah, so we've checked the email, make sure it's valid and we're just gonna do some quick checks here. So uh, if, for example, the name is this length? Yeah, length of name is more than like, I don't know, I don't know what, 200 or something. Then again, we're gonna just return some error for now. Yeah, so I think this is all like the basic stuff that we need to do. Um, and we're going to be ret returning some HTML there. And how do we return HTML? HTML renders the HTTP um, template specified by its file name. It also updates the HTTP callback, the HTTP code, and sets the content type as text HTML. Okay, let's read that documentation and see. Okay, so this is just a templating thing, right? Yeah, we've got to figure out how to use this thing, this particular thing here. HTTP dot status, okay. Yeah, so this is a template. This is this should be like a file name to something, right? Okay, yeah. So um, in essence, what we're going to be doing is 
Uh, we're going to be replacing the contact us with some sort of like success message here, right? And for that, we can, um, for now, I guess, the, the easiest way, since we've got the most of the logic kind of uh, similarly done before, we can create a new file and then just put something like a contact success here.html or something. And this is our template. And we can do something like, you know, h2. Wait, what? H2 and say something like, you know, message sent or something. And then another paragraph there to say, you know, um, the message was successfully sent. I kind of want to pause some like templating things here. Thank you. I think this is how we do it in, in Go. Uh, Go does have a templating library, by the way. It's called HTML uh, template or template HTML or something. Oh, go lang. And I just want to make sure that I can pass in these uh, these these variables here. Yeah, so it's just a a double quotation there. Cool, yeah. Right, so we've got that message send. Okay, yeah, so now what we can do is uh, go back into the domain.go. Um, instead of file name, let's do templates.contact success html and this is my variables template virus this is make oh gosh how do you make a map again how do we make a map so this is an array of integers. Oh gosh, I, this is what you get for not writing Go for a long time. Make map go lang. There you go. Go by example is a, an amazing website. There you go. Map of string to integers. Okay. The keys are strings and the values are integers. All right. So you got a map of. Uh, I guess there's a string here and a string here as well. All right. Can, can we inline this? That's the thing though. So can we, there you go. This is what I wanted here. So we don't even need to make, we just want to like inline everything here for now. So name is equals to name up here and email equals to email. And there you go. <laughs> Expected a type, found this, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are correct. All right, so in essence, this should, like, this should, you know, pass the entire form as a, as a little recap of what we've done here. So I've got this contact form here being served by Jin. And whenever we, you know, we want to like upload something or send a message, we want this, we want, we want it. So when we click on submit, uh, this will generate a request on our backend, a post request to the, uh, the, con the, the contact form handler. The contact form handler is going to you know, pass the form, get the data and so on and so forth, and then send a message back to the user to say, you know, your, your message has been successfully sent or something like that. Uh, and this is all going to be done through HTMX, which is what we're going to do right now. We're going to insert HTMX into our website, right? So this is the version that we want. Okay, so let's see if we can W get this again. So we've got the simple CSS there. And what we want to do now is just get the HTMX. Or 
maybe not. So HTMX. I think that's actually generating a redirect call there. So what we can do is we can probably just save this directly onto onto um, my directory here, my my web application directory. So let's do that. Um, right. Let's just save it to downloads and then we can pull it from here. So let's send it, kind of copy it from MNTC users. So my, from, I'm going to copy it from my Windows to my Linux here. And there you go. We've got HTMX up and running right here. Uh, which now it probably means that we can insert into our website, right? So let's let's see it here. So this is what we kind of want. And we're going to put it on the index page um, instead of the source here. I'm just going to just going to kind of um, change the link slightly. And we want it to go to templates and we're going to go to HTMX min.js uh, min.js and this is kind of like why I like you see why I like HTMX now but I'll explain it when I actually <laughs> achieve it so um, we do need to use a few functions though first of all we're going to be using a, a post request right so we're going to actually go for the uh, hx I think it's hx method or something like that hx target post or something but I need to look at the tutorial. So examples, let's look at it. Uh, we do want to put a progress bar. But yeah, I mean, HX target, uh, this HX swap HX. Okay. So what we're going to be doing here is I, I, I'm just going to be copying this, this tutorial, this, this example, basically. Um, so in the form here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to put a hx post and this is the um this is what we're going to this is the url that we're going to be making the request to right so is i think it was contact send that's what we, we wanted and what and we can actually tell htmx which bit of my website I'm going to remove and replace with the uh, the response, right? So this is where we, we're going to put H, HX target there, right? And this can be the, the whole contact form class. Because then it's going to get rid of all of this, all of this in here, and replace it with what's returned from my, my request, basically. Uh, so yeah, I mean, this is for now, this is kind of what we want. This is kind of what we want, to be honest. Um, so let's, you know, let's, let's just see if it worked. So going back to the backend that we've created. So let's reload this. It's not working obviously because it's not running, but when you, when we do run router go file is all right. Okay. So we can submit and it's, it's not going to let us submit because it's not um, it's not being validated properly, right? And that's that's something that min or simple CSS is doing, I guess. But if I put my name here and my email, is it going to work? Let's see. And it didn't. So we've got a target error. So minimum js line that one uh so what's the issue hx target contact form so contact form okay it doesn't exist All right makes sense what if we change it to id now <laughs> is it still gonna work so let's try again So again, we have a 
target error. So maybe I am not doing something correctly here. Let's see. Let's look at the docs again. And we're specifically using the Ajax kind of functionality of HTMX. So it, it does all of the Ajax stuff for you. Um, targets, there you go. If you want the response to be loaded into a different element other than the one that made the request, you can use the H X target attribute, which takes a CSS selector. Looking back at our live search, okay. So we've got htx get debug console. What is going on here? So we've got htx get trigger delay. Okay, so it does have to have the hash on it. That's fine. I thought it would automatically figure out that it's a, an ID, but it doesn't. Yeah, let's try again, shall we? Let's try again. So if we do this. Right, response status error code um, 404 not found from contact send. So we didn't find my post endpoint. Now, why is that? Why is that? Ah, because it's templates dash contact send, which is not quite right, is it? It's not quite right at all. Yeah, it's not quite right. Uh, and that the reason for that is because we're kind of just saying that the HX post is contact send, but it should really be, uh, I guess this, right? Because then it's not going to append to the, the current URL. Uh, so yeah, let's try that again. This, this should be a little bit better now. This is not a valid email. Uh, we'll check that out in a bit. So, hello. So, response error 500 from contact send. And, you know, let's see what the issue is here. You can see we've got a big red error message from Jin. Uh, so, contact send, encoding is there. So, we've got all the headers for the, the request. You can see that you got the the HTMX headers here as well. So header HX request is equal to true. Target is contact form. Uh, what is the issue? Runtime error. Invalid memory address or nil pointer dereference. Now I'm figuring, trying to figure out which kind of uh, line it is. So it's line 52. Line 52 is giving me an error here. It seems to be failing whenever we want to kind of open the contact success, the HTML page here. Okay. Does it exist in the first place? Contact success, contact success HTML. So I'm trying, basically trying to serve this file as a template. Yeah, let's see what the issue is. So if we put that there and we send it again, it pauses the form and it gets everything just fine. As you can see, materials message, hello. Yeah, this is the line that fails for some reason. Contact success.html. We've got a code, we got the file name here and the object any instance. HTML renders the HTTP template specified by its file name. It also plays the HTTP code and sets the content type as HTML CSS. Let's 
let's look at the gin HTML stuff. Using templates with the same. Okay, maybe is it because I'm actually not doing this properly? I saw that in their example they had like email there. And in here they had something like this as well. Maybe if I do it again, is it gonna work now? No, yeah, it still doesn't. It still doesn't work. Why is it not working? So request the pass form. Unable to step while the previous step is interrupted by a breakpoint. Use continue to resume. Yeah, continue. No idea what's going on here. Let's try again. <laughs> Yeah, so this still complains. This still complains. So server.go. It fails inside gin. Invalid memory address on the old pointer. <laughs> We're nearly there. Nearly, nearly there. It has to be a gin H. Okay, right. Maybe it does have to be that type, right? It can't just be a, an any. Yeah, this is just a map anyway, so. And then just to make sure we've got templates and then we also have the right name here, right? Yeah, we've got contact success. This still fails. Jesus, I can't. I can't pass this template. It seems. First load resource. Okay, that's an error here. template's contact success. No HTML. And it's not even like a file error, is it? I can't see anything to do with files here. This is the bit in my code, I guess, but main function two, C++, uh, C.html, HTTP, status okay. Yeah, I mean, for some context, I'm trying to kind of like parse a HTML template file 
and send it to the user. But it, it seems like Jim is Jin is not really really happy with this. So let's see if removing that. I don't see why the dot would make any difference, but we will figure out. Yeah, no operation here still still messes up entirely. So we pass the form. We got a context. I'm starting to get bored now, so maybe the stream will, will end very soon, but... What could be the issue here though? Because that file does exist. Contact. There's just no way this is any of this is wrong, right? So templates is the same freaking the same freaking like um, path as this this here templates. email and we've got name there so it is it is going to be something stupid isn't it name and email and what are they doing in that documentation that I'm not doing Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm doing differently here. But basically, this contact form is returning me an error because something is panicking on this this particular um, line right here. This is the line that's failing. Moitaba Karimi, I hope I hope I pronounced the name correctly. Hi, hi, how are you doing, man? Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. And this is the first time I'm actually seeing. I guess you in here, so, you know, nice to meet you. Yeah, so this line is not really serving the template properly, or something is going wrong along the way. And I'm not entirely sure what it is, so let's see if we can figure it out. So I'm using the same kind of like function that I use in here for returning the, the HTML uh, template. I guess they executed the HTML template. Templates user. Huh? I'm so confused. One second. It's trying to like serve users index here. But then that is in templates users index. So I'm a little bit. What is load HTML glob though? What is load HTML glob? Gin. Maybe that's what I need to do. Let's do that. Let's do that. Maybe, maybe that's what we need to do. Okay, so we load that and then maybe we just put the contact success here. Maybe we have to load the HTML first and then, I don't know. I don't know, man. This is just a, a desperate attempt now. Pattern matches no files. Templates. Okay, why? Why does it match no files? Oh, at least it gives me a nice error, right? So if I do R dot load HTML files. Templates. Okay. 
Okay. I think that will load contact success. Let's see if it works now though. Okay, that seems to at least start the server. If we restart this and rename and we do everything here. Okay, right, so now something worked, I guess, right? The only problem is that we don't really <laughs> we don't really have any data getting back here. So contact success is undefined error. What if we just do this? Temple, temple, okay. Let's try again, shall we? Uh, this time I made a, a little change here. So basically, um, I'm calling the template like just a file name without the uh, the slash or the, the dot slash. Maybe this this library here, Jin, uh, loads all the templates and stores like a hash map. Like this this file name goes to this th these contents or something like that. I'm hoping that this is the issue, but we'll see. Okay, this time we get no error and we finally have something that actually works, I guess, right? Uh, so we've got a message sent from my email and then it says, thank you and in your name. The message was sent successfully and that's good. That's what we wanted. Okay, now let's have a, another one as well. Let's put everything into contact, right? <laughs> and let's uh, duplicate this and then call this contact failure, right? Contact failure. Yeah. And then we can kind of have um, like a fail message or something like that. It's actually selects a little bit of a better color, I guess, right? So maybe this one. Yeah, this is just going to be a, a failure message. Um, I'm just going to say your message could not be sent. Error is something like, and then we're just going to it's going to show these these. Um, information, right? Because if anything fails, for example, if you send the wrong email, if you send a, I don't know, um, a massive message or something like that, then we, <laughs> we're going to display that error, right? Uh, so when does that ever happen? Well, it all happens in this, in this endpoint here, right? This is the contact form endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, instead of sending a JSON back whenever there's an error, I'm also going to send a HTML. Um, and then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to put in those templates or those contact uh, failure.html. Then we do have an error and we do have an email as well. So it's actually very easy to modify this, if you've noticed. Um, I'm, I'm kind of enjoying this framework so far. It's not too difficult. Obviously, this is a very, very sort of like bare bones uh, web application. This is actually a, you know, the simplest thing you could ever do. Uh, if you made anything more complex than this, you'd have to 
properly think about the architecture, which I will, I guess, in a, in a future streams, uh, if people turn out to like it. But it, it seems like people don't are not enjoying this so far, because yeah. But you know, for the future, this is what I would do. I'll probably think about the architecture. I'll, I'll think about how can, I can split these thing into these these um, handlers into maybe different modules. A one that will handle contact forms or forms alone. Uh, another one just for templating and, and whatnot, and abstract all of that. Um, so email, we got email again here. And for now, as you can probably guess, we're we're returning HTML from the web server and then placing the HTML that we return from the server into the the user's web page. Uh, we don't want to do that. Like ideally. There must be a better way, right? And, and there is. There's a there's something called the HTML templating, or is is the HTMX uh, extension? Sorry. So if you Google that documentation, the client side templates. Uh, this is what we can kind of use uh, to return a lot less data from the server. So this would, for example, take in a return JSON from our, our web server, and then place the the JSON uh, data into the the web page. Uh, with a certain template and uh, there are many many examples of this is it's, it's a very powerful tool and this is kind of like why i like html oh sorry why I, <laughs> this is kind of why i like htmx so htmx um of course it's written in javascript i'm not saying it's good i'm not saying it's bad but it makes this sort of process of kind of like handling forms uh, making requests to your your own web server a lot easier than it would be otherwise if you had to write all the javascript for it so basically it allows people like me who only really know uh, <laughs> you know one or two languages for web development like golang and and rust uh, to actually make good uh, back-end and front-end applications using you know only one language which is your, your back-end of choice really uh, obviously combined with htmx and the other and and the other good stuff like um you know css or bootstrap whatever you're using for actually making your website look good but it basically removes the need for handwritten javascript So yeah, that's that's kind of why I like it. It's it's a very simple tool that you know enables people like me to to develop uh, more complex applications very easily. So yeah, could we have while as a single binary that run without any dependencies? In, could we have while as a single binary that run without any dependencies in production? Moistaba um, or Moitaba? You're gonna to have to explain that, man, because I don't really understand the question. Sorry, are you talking about Golang or are you talking about C++? Uh, also, can you give me like a, a little example of what you mean? Sorry, I, I can't answer if I don't if I didn't get a question. Well, thank you for asking. Otherwise, <laughs> I, I do look forward to actually understanding it. So, yeah, HTMX. Here we are. Now, what was I going to do? Yeah, return the errors, return the errors. So we've got HTML here. Maybe you're talking about HTMX and Golang, right? Could we have, well, as a single binary that run without any dependencies in production? If that's what you mean, then yeah, that's that's what HTMX allows you to do. So this is all one single binary. What you're seeing here is just one binary. There's nothing else running. There's no like Node.js running on the background. There's, there's nothing running. It's just a, a Golang application, an executable. This is what's serving uh, this, this web application that you can see here. Let me know if that's not the question though. I tried to make sense of it, but... Okay. So now if anything is like going to go wrong, I can I can kind of like uh, see that on the web page, right? So this again, our application here, we're going to 
look at the templates. Uh, we've got the index already here. Uh, we're going to put my name in, like Mateus. We're going to put uh, an invalid email this time, right? So he has a space in it, right? And we're just going to say hello. There you go. So th th this actually validates the email, I guess. But you know, if we just remove that and I just put that, yeah, it it's doing the validation on the front end side, which is a little bit annoying, I guess. Uh, no ideal, no ideal. Can I remove this though? <laughs> yeah, this is kind of like validating everything for me on the front end. If I disable JavaScript, is that an option? Well, one of the things I can do actually as well, this, this is definitely not validating, is like, hello, my name is Lim Shady. There you go. This is certainly not going to work uh, because the message is too big for my for my page for my um, handler. So if we submit it now and we let it run, oh, what is what is the issue here? This is something else entirely. Sorry, hold on. I want to use it in CI to make artifacts and just use in target machine without installing Golang. Sorry, I want to use in CI to make an artifact and just use it in target machine without installing Golang. So do you want to like compile your, your Golang application to a different machine? Is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, you know, that's that's possible with Golang as far as I know. Even in CI, it's actually the same as you would do locally in CI. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I don't quite understand the question though. If you're just asking about cross compilation in the Golang, yes, you, you can compile uh, your application for Windows, you can compile it for Linux, you can compile it for ARM or something like that. Uh, as far as I know, Golang does support those those platforms, uh, and it's you know possible to do it in CI as well. What you're actually looking for, I'm going to show it here. You're going to go on Google and you're going to search for cross compilation uh, Golang, right? And then you're going to read a lot of these web posts and you're going to understand what, what cross compilation means <laughs> and you're going to uh, memorize the uh, the um, the commands here and then you're just going to create a, a script on your CI that will do this. So if you want to like, if, if you're running Ubuntu on your CI but you want to compile for, for Windows, uh, you got to kind of write a script that will do that, okay? But the, the keyword is cross compilation, that's what you're, you're looking for here, so. Uh, yeah, we got the same error as before now. That's because we're not actually loading the um, the template file. So let's do a glob. Yeah. Okay. Let's send it again. Uh, we now have contact success is undefined. And also it makes me think that this is a valid message, so... What's the character count of this? Jesus. Characters. Yeah, 105,000. <laughs> so it should be failing somehow. It should be failing. I don't know why this is kind of complaining that contact success is um, not found as a template because it should be so contact templates contact and then anything okay let's let's try and see if that works okay so files template pattern matches no files okay maybe I'm just like absolutely misusing the this this glob thing so let's just uh, change this to whatever it was before All right is this gonna work is this gonna work? Oh, 
I forget the, the Golang absolutely tells you off for not doing the, the right formatting on the language. Go F and T, right? That's the one. Right, so is this working now? Let's have a look. Oh no, 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 no. It's not. And this is actually failing where? So go instance. Contact failure by HTML. So contact failure by HTML is not being parsed as a template. Contact success, contact failure by HTML. And it also does make sense that it didn't work there. Contact failure or HTML, yeah. We are already written, need to override, okay, okay, okay. Like, why is this not working? Okay, now, now nothing seems to be working. That's not good. That isn't good at all. <laughs> Thing is that I don't actually get any useful errors here either. Because before we, we were saying something like, you know, um, contact success is undefined or whatever. And when he didn't find the other, um, Template also complained about it. So yeah. So templates file path, templates file path. Headers were already written. Wanted to override status code with 200. Huh? How is headers already written though? Ah, yes, 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 it's here. And I just return, do an early return here. Yeah, the reason why is like it's it's kind of sending HTML back, but then it's trying to override the headers with something else as it reaches here. But let's see if that helps somehow, if an early return will help. I'm not entirely sure though. Yeah, this is not working. This. Okay, so we received a code 400 from contact send. Ah, yeah, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That does make sense. It makes sense because I guess HTMX is expecting a success. <laughs> so, yeah, in that sense, let's just return OK, status OK for all of these errors here and see if it works. A bit disappointing that it doesn't support errors. I mean, can you can you even handle errors uh, with HTMX? I don't really know. I don't really know myself. <laughs> uh, Slim, nearly one day. Hey man, hey dude, it's good to see you, man. How's it going? How was your Christmas slash New Year's? I hope you had a, an amazing time. And like me, you rested quite a lot. <laughs> you deserve 100k by the end of this year. Oh man, yes, yes, please, please. Um, We'll see though, I'm not I'm not the most active YouTuber out there, but I try my best. <laughs> oh you did not did not have a good uh, end of year? Oh man, that's disappointing. You know what I did? I just sat on my sofa and played games the entire time for two weeks. So it was it was much needed, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it was shit relationship fell apart. Oh no dude, oh no dude, can't believe you. But I'll tell you what, I mean it was it was for the best, right? That's what everyone says, so Let's hope that 2024 is a <laughs> is a better year for you. And I mean, in a way, you know, you're a bit more free to enjoy now. I guess you know, can go out more and meet more, meet new people or, or whatnot. But you know, I'm I'm sorry to hear that, dude. <laughs> I can't imagine what it felt like, especially on New Year's though. It was shit, really shit, but yeah. Right, 
right so i'd certainly have like at least um 10, 000. there you go so that that's working now that's good so I failed to send a message from Mateo's blah, blah, blah. Uh, error, the message was too big, which is a good uh, a good error message here. Nice. Um, yeah, I kind of want to play, kind of want to play with the template and stuff now though. Yeah, I kind of want to play with that. Your shit relationship fell apart 26th of December. Oh no, dude. Hello. Uh, HTMX is nice though. It is, yeah. <laughs> Changing the topic a little bit. Uh, yeah, HTMX is really nice. I was just saying that I really like it because it's kind of it allows people like me who don't really know much JavaScript and only know like very limited web um, framework or, or web backend languages uh, to develop an entire web application in like under two hours like I'm doing here. Right. So it's, it's really good. Really, really good. So if I were, if I were to write this, this whole thing here with JavaScript, I would have to kind of like write the, the validation code myself for the form. So it's like a contact form. Uh, then I have to write the Ajax stuff. That's like kind of like sending, requesting or sending the contact form data to my backend somewhere and then retrieving that and then replacing the uh, the the content on the web page all with JavaScript myself. Uh, I know it's not difficult. I mean, you can probably do it in like half an hour, right? But HTMX makes it so much nicer by just, uh, you're just basically adding a, a HTML um, attribute to a tag, right? So it, it's really nice in that way. But yeah. So I guess people will see a lot more like full on web applications written solely in like Golang or just Rust or, or whatever. And I really like the fact that I don't have to run <laughs> a node. But yeah, I, I just find node very bloated. But you know, that's a, a personal opinion. Uh, and I know it's good for what it is. It, it's very good. I'm not shitting on it. Don't worry. <laughs> But yeah, uh, it kind of works now, so so I can send and I can return errors now. If I just remove that breakpoint, yeah, things things do send. That's good. Uh, the point is, can we kind of um, can we kind of write a HTMX template now, though? Because that's what I was kind of like leading leaning towards now. So instead of returning the HTML for my website. I want to return just uh, JSON objects, right? So if I return a JSON object, I kind of want to take that data and then put it on the, the client side HTML. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, so the node is slow. Yeah, man, it is. It is really slow, really, really slow. But, you know, it's, it's the most kind of like wildly used, uh, <laughs> like web framework backend out there, right? We, we can't, we can't like, deny that but it is, it's true like so many applications are written with node so so many in fact i mean um, it, it probably is the majority of the internet nowadays so in a way you know it's it's it's, it's terrible but you know it, it does the job and people seem to like it but python sucks yeah python sucks even more like junk I've, I've never seen someone serious about writing web applications uh, using django and stuff uh, I have used Django before with Python though, um, but just for very, very sort of like simple university projects and, and whatnot. But yeah. But anyway, I'm very excited about HTMX. That's what, <laughs> that's what I can say here. Uh, so let's try and use this template thing, right? Oh, this is, this is Jin's framework. So if I do, 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 do. What am I looking for? I'm looking for HTMX documentation here. Yeah, there you go. All right, so the client side templates extension. This extension supports transforming a JSON XML request response into HTML via a client side template before it's swapped into the DOM. Currently, four client side template engines are supported. Mustache. I have no idea what any of these are. So. I guess this is what he uses under the hood, right? Client side stuff. Oh, these libraries are huge, by the way. They seem to be huge. JavaScript libraries as well. Uh, when you add this extension on a, a an element, any element below it in the DOM uh, can use one of the four attributes named template engine template. For example, mustache template with a template ID and the extension will resolve and render the template 
the standard way for the template engine. Okay, so mustache looks a like mustache script tag. Okay, is there an example here? I kind of just want to just want to get the example. Yeah, first of all, as always, let's download this and then make it available uh, to our build, right? So what we're going to do is we've downloaded it. I'm just going to move it onto onto here now. So if I can just move from my my C drive, my Windows. I don't know, what am I doing? Downloads and then client side template into here. Right. So we have that now. Uh, we can obviously include this into our, I guess, our website onto the script or the template, the index template here. Kind of going to do this as well. Same as what we had before. Yeah, so we've got the, the client side templates there. And then we have the usage here. This is the interesting bit. So div extension client side templates. So do I have to add this, this into um, my div or whatever? So how do you feel about Go? I love C++ Roast and Go. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like Go as well, man. Uh, my, my girlfriend does Go full time and I kind of learned it by like watching her really. Um, so I had like this this website that I, I used for my restaurant and it's fully developed in Golang. Let me see if I can like, get it for you. So a, a very good story. <laughs> like uh, nearly two years ago, I opened a business with my parents and it was a, a food takeaway business. And of course I wrote all of, all of the, uh, the web framework myself or the web um, application myself. I, I used a different framework for it, obviously. Uh, it's called uh, Gorilla Mux or something. It was popular at the time. But yeah, I mean, must not forget to invalid the uh, the token I just showed you guys because I'm stupid. But yeah, this is it. Uh, this is written entirely in Go. Uh, Go Bootstrap 4, I think, jQuery, and then a few other JavaScript plugins. And you know, it's just a fully functioning website and whatnot. Uh, but it's very simple. We like supported like menus. We had menus and shit for all the all the food that we served at the restaurant. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer on on the internet because I. I, I still have the domain for it, but I don't pay for the AWS hosting anymore because it was too expensive. It was like 10 quid a month and I, we closed the restaurant, so there was no point. But, you know, uh, so this was my <laughs> my first journey with, with Golang. This is this was written about two years ago. And ever since um, then, I, I, I do go like every now and then, basically. Do you do go on your like full time job? Like what? Why do you like it so much? I like it because it's simple. I'm not going to lie. It feels like Python, but Python slash C, but for the web. <laughs> and it's a bit safer. Uh, but anyway, let's continue here. So I have a div. Okay, so what did these um, these libraries? They all take JSON as an input. Here's an example of this setup for Mustache using a template tag. So to use the client side templates, you need to include the HTMX, the extension, and the rendering engine. Ah, okay, so I do also have to ex to um, include Mustache, for example. <laughs> If you wish to put a template into another file, you can use directives such as script, source, my template, ID template. Okay. Let's just look at this because I have no idea how to how to even do it. Client side template, JSON. There is a template tag here. 
that I guess gets replaced by mustache. That's what I'm I'm kind of wondering. Cool. Maybe, maybe I'm not going to do this now because I just realized it doesn't really make any sense for me to change what I have now into a template because it's actually just a very simple kind of... Uh... Oh, what's going on here? Could not find page. Oh yeah, that's because it's not running. What the hell? Is it running? Uh, port is already in use. Ah, okay, yeah. Hey, I have a different application running. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't really make much sense now because, like, it's just a simple contact form, right? This this would make more sense if I was like retrieving a bunch of data from a database, something like uh, the menu items, for example, that I just showed you, guys. Uh, and then every menu item would be a JSON object with like a a link to a, an image, and then. The description and the name and the price and then we return a list of those and then we can like do a client side uh template thing so yeah i mean it, it it seems good it seems promising seems very promising indeed but yeah i think actually i'm slim i'm gonna leave the stream here dude <laughs> you joined in a little bit late today but i'll catch you up uh, maybe either tomorrow or the day after i i might not stream tomorrow because i've got like a video to edit i'm actually Finally releasing a, a web server backend comparison between C++ and Rust that I recorded maybe like nearly two months ago. I just never got time to edit it and now I do. Uh, so maybe I'll do that tomorrow, but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll see you guys uh, later on this week. I will stream more times this week. In fact, I'm going to stream a lot more this year because I'm trying to grow the channel. As you can probably guess, we're, we're nearly at a thousand <laughs> subscribers. Uh, but I do need to kind of uh, grow the channel with more content, not just C++ and Rust. I want to do, as you can probably guess, some, some Go stuff as well, if it's received well. I don't know. Um, but I'm looking forward to this year. And, you know, thank, thank every, I, I do thank everyone uh, in the past year for, for supporting the channel. And, yeah, I'll see you guys uh, <laughs> a lot more times this year. But, yeah, I hope you all have a good night and bye-bye.